blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
have still studied prosperity that we forget that one day in nakedness we came and in nakedness we are going to go all of us are studying when you hear the subject but god is going to give you a new car hallelujah god is going to give you a new house hallelujah you are not going to die hallelujah for you we who want me oh i will Everybody is going to die. When you come to this world, you look at your hand. It is bright. Your face is shining. Everything about you is succulently nice. Then you are born to a world. The Bible says, all the days of man is for trouble. You are born into it. And now I'm here to tell you this morning, the day you entered into this world, you enter Wahala. And only those who find Jesus, the Holy Ghost now begin to cement their heart. For me to live is Christ. To die is gain. To live is Christ. To die is gain. In one single compound world, the day you are born, you are born to trouble. But the day you die, you go back to peace and rest. Where there's no trouble, where there's no wahala. And know that I
your hand with somebody on your left and right let's pray I want everybody to do God honor to stand to your feet everybody everybody stand to your feet wake anybody sleeping up help someone there's a river of God there's a river of God it's flowing from the throne of God it calms the nerves and radiates light. Father, I pray that the subject of this morning that shall go to many parts of the world will be the seed for this generation to know that your labor is not in vain. Your word declares, because I live, you shall live also. Thank you for being a God who is alive. In Jesus' name, Amen. Out of your Bible and hold it and stand to your feet. I'm dealing on this subject, what I call the benefit of death. The subject we have all neglected. Say with me everybody, benefit of death. Say it loud. Good. Turn with me to your Bible. To Philippians chapter 1. Paul speaking. 
says in verse 20 according to my earnest expectation read that with me everybody and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed but that with all boldness as always so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body whether it be by life or by death Christ might be magnified for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain tell somebody great gain please deliver yourself from demons and from all things you know about death today because I want to deal on this subject once and for all when I was a little boy I lived at number six Omina Street here in Benin City when morning we heard that somebody died at Igu Street the announcement was made I didn't know the man I'd never heard of him but immediately it was announced we heard a shout Bo! we were all told get inside somebody died he died at Igu Street we live at Omwina Street one street from the other and cocoa plantation separate the two streets the man who died was not coming to our house but we were all told run inside somebody died as if the cops was going to get up and pursue all of us we were all locked inside because somebody died from that day a seed of fear was sown into me and when somebody died we should run so as students whenever we are coming from school whether it was when it was elementary school or higher school once we hear somebody died all of us start to run as if the dead was coming to your house then the night they are singing and dancing every heart of each one of us is panting somebody died your dreams are in desire your sleep in confusion because we were told to fear death because death was pain and death was disaster Paul said it is my great expectation always and hope you know that all of you I told bishops yesterday in Lagos I said we have still studied prosperity that we forget that one day in nakedness we came and in nakedness we are going to go all of us are studying when you hear the subject but God is going to give you a new car hallelujah God is going to give you a new house hallelujah you are not going to die hallelujah for you we will we me everybody is going to die but Paul said my own is with expectation somebody shout hallelujah it's with hope it's with joy he said I look forward to it when it comes it will come and when it comes I will not be in pain I will expect it with gladness then he said okay yeah, not you now he said for me to live is Christ but to die is gain somebody say gain. gain how many of you are afraid to make gain is anybody who hate gain let me talk to you seriously because I see some of you you bow your head to your laps when you hear somebody die you shake hey, hey, die. hey. but you pass motor on the way every time lorry tumble 70 people die because your brother is not there then die you hear your neighbor who is an armed robber die 
You say, at last, thank God, he died at last. But when it concerns somebody that you know, hell, hell, he, 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 he could not have died. Hmm. I didn't even want to come to church this morning because of what I heard. My leg was shaking and my head was swelling. Somebody, why Jesus permit this one? If you were expecting it like Paul did, you know that we have another ambassador on the throne of God. Paul said, it's with expectation, Kamarala. It's with expectation and hope. And I look forward always. Then and now and later, death is gain. So since three days now, I've been working mathematics, Akira. Where were you before you came here? How many of you know before you were born, you were already living? You will not believe it. Before you were born, you were in existence. Yes. Yes. And when you die, you will still be in existence. Yes. Yes. Somebody say hallelujah. Yes. The gap between life and death is a temporal time God permits you. Before you were born, you were a seed of eternity. And the day you were born, if it is like Benin, Amoro! If it's Isha, Amoro! If it's Yoruba, the same thing. Equibadu, Oluashe, Oluashe. We are dancing, we are singing. You forgot that you are living in a place where you never have pain, no sorrow, no disgrace, no sickness no disease when you come to this world you look at your hand it is bright your face is shining everything about you is succulently nice then you are born to a world the bible say all the days of man is for trouble you are born into it and now i'm here to tell you this morning the day you entered into this world you enter wahala i don't know whether you are hearing what i'm saying your mother care for you, your father care for you, your school fees, your uniform. When you are small, people pay your fees, people feed you. When you become an adult, you are looking for food to eat. You are looking for money to pay rent. You are looking for a wife to marry. You are looking for children to feed. You are looking for trouble everywhere, every day. Because you are born to trouble. And only those who find Jesus, the Holy Ghost now begin to cement their heart. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. To live is Christ, to die is gain. In one single compound world, the day you are born, you are born to trouble. But the day you die, you go back to peace and rest. Where there's no trouble, where there's no wahala. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. After you die. You know, I was in where somebody died. Three months before the person was buried. The day the person died, the people cried. After one week, they forgot. Then they kept the body in mortuary. Because they were building a new house to bury the person. Three months later, they brought the dead body out. And I was going to be the one to conduct the funeral service. And the whole family were crying. I said, until you wipe your face. Because you are hypocritical. For three months, some of you have gone to England three times and come back. Three children and your family have married. While your dead father's body was still in mortuary. You didn't cry. The day you married, you were throwing flowers, you were eating, you were dancing. Three months, your father died in August. This is November. Two of your, three of your children married. You man, the head of the family, you went abroad four times. Your father's body was in open. Today now they bring his body out, you are crying, I say you are hypocritical. Before they all clean their face, I said, look at that day, I was in your wedding. You were all singing and dancing. You were throwing grass on your children. You were throwing shiny, you were cooking, you were eating. You carried band, you carried orchestra. Police band was there. Your father was in the fridge. I said, the day your father died, that was the day he left here. He had not done anything for you fathers in that time. Today that you bring him out, you only bring him out for a show. Now you have acquired the money you needed. 
you want to display now for the people to see all this your tears is hypocritical wipe your face if you want me to conduct it they went and powdered their face and i took the microphone for me to live is christ and to die is gain are you afraid to make profit open your mouth are you afraid to make profit when you make profit do you cry when you gain do you cry when money comes to your hand more than what you need do you cry when you were in trouble and you are delivered do you cry when you are in pain and you are healed do you cry when you are facing trial and now you are discharging the court do you cry what do you say say hallelujah Paul said death is gain death is gain scripture number 2 1st Corinthians 15 look at your Bible if you have one beginning from verse 41 we read that briefly then we jump to another longer side of it there is one glory of the Sun say that to everybody and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars and one for one star different from another one star different from another star in glory so also is resurrection of the dead it is sown in corruption it is raised in incorruption somebody say hallelujah how many of you have eaten new yam before new yam you don't know yam y-a-m yam how many of you have eaten corn c-o-r-o-n old corn and new corn which one is sweeter how do you get new corn by the death of what old corn do you believe that when you hold fresh corn what do you do before toilet roll that was the good game after the corn but that's fine forget about that one but come to this one this is Paul saying the star has glory the moon has glory the sun has glory and he says so also is the resurrection of the dead why do you prefer pain than gain because you lack knowledge why do you prefer trouble than peace because you have no knowledge he said death is sown in corruption death is raised in incorruption it is sown in dishonor it is raised in glory when somebody die it causes regret but when he get to heaven heaven rejoice is anybody hearing what i'm saying this morning what is making you to weep is making heaven to gain he's raising glory he's sown in weakness he's raising power everybody say hallelujah you can also find that one in philippians 3 21. it is sown in natural body it is raised in spiritual body there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body many of you prefer the natural body this one you have malaria every time this one you are afraid when you lock your door you see go back and look whether the acid base is there natural body this one when they shook your leg your head will respond this one when there's no food in your belly your mouth say i'm hungry how many of you have ever chewed food and left it in your mouth what do you do when you chew it you swallow it belly eat it but who told you you were hungry your mouth the mouth hold your food for you if you put one snake here one egg here one chicken here one beef there inside your mouth you refuse to swallow it will you grow the answer is no many of you want to live on the natural life 
you are very you, because you have no hope of heaven because you have not labored for heaven because this is the only place especially you unbelievers this is the only place you can be called chief this is the only place you can be called king this is the only place you can be called general this is the only place you can be called fit master this is the only place you can be called colonel this is the only place you can be called governor that's why you are afraid to die we who know where we are going we are looking forward to it because when this when this corruptible body shall put on incorruptible when this dying flesh shall put on on dying body then the song of triumph is sung in heaven we'll understand it by and by we will understand it by and by since i spoke to you yesterday i have been with my bible reasoning why do bad things happen to good people because god made them so what you call bad is god's good jesus said unless the son of man die there'll be no salvation for the world today you are dancing hallelujah he arose hallelujah. you forget he died you forget that if he didn't die you couldn't have said i'm a christian what is death therefore death is the benefit of reward for the labor we labor for god while we are in the flesh those who don't know god death is the end you have no more meat no more good clothes to wear no more no more good house to live no more good car to ride that's why you are crying and i join you to them for those of us who know jesus his body shall put on incorruption we shall go to heaven and wear the robe of christ as he is in heaven so shall we be in this world everyone say big hallelujah death is gain death is benefit death is reward the bible says verse 45 so it is written the first man adam was made a living soul the last adam was made a quickening spirit how be that was not first which is spiritual but that which is natural and afterward that which is spiritual why is it that we have to die first before we become undying that's the question he's asking here the first man is of the earth and is earthy the second man is of the lord from heaven can i hear you say big amen, amen. when you were made god dug sand and molded you and because you are a, you are a body of sand and the body of clay you are not one day we will be told dust to dust earth to earth paul say you are earthy you are you are flesh and by flesh you cannot make the throne of god and for you you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of god preachers prophets teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
have eternal life, you have to destroy this flesh and say no. And say no. It's like circumcision. You refuse to be circumcised, you're unclean. It's like pregnancy. If you refuse to deliver, you can never name your child. So also is death. Because you came from earth, God has to return back to where he dug you out, back to where you, he filled the hole back. Because God owed no man. And if you were taken from the ground, God borrowed you from the ground to put his life into you. When you and I die, God returned us to where he took us. We filled the hole back. Then God now said, the soul that is my own, come and stay with me forevermore. How many of you can say hallelujah? <laughs> For those of you who are not going to heaven, start to cry now. Because the last clothes you will wear is the one you are wearing now. The last good food you will eat is the one you are eating now. After now, you are going to the lake of fire that burned with brimstone. There will be no water to drink, there will be no food to eat, there will be no rice, there will be no bar market, no Kingsway, no exclusive supermarket, no Peugeot to ride, no Mercedes Benz, no nothing. So if you are going to start to cry for yourself, start now. But if you know my Jesus, rejoice in the Lord. And again I say always rejoice. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> Let's see what Paul say about death here. Hallelujah. How be that was first. But look at verse 47. The first man is of the earth and earthy. The second man is the spiritual. Until you die, you never become a spiritual man. As it is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as it is heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. I want to slow down here. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom the kingdom the kingdom the kingdom of god neither do it corruption inherit incorruption how many of you want to make heaven you will not be permitted to stroll there if you refuse to drop this one you will not put on that one your greed cannot stop you from dying and no one died. Doctor, what is that? No! Malaria, malaria, malaria. Malaria is pursuing me. Come! Say, give, say, give, say, give. My body will. Can I not swallow some? How many? How many? All. I let give me water all. Hmm. Tomorrow morning. Oh, but say, malaria! Have you done it? Put one here again. Another one here. Put another one here. Put one here. I don't want to die. Get, get out. Whoa, whoa. My money is in the bank. I've not spent it yet. <laughs> Obaze will give you all. He will give you and take the receipt from and give you receipt. Have I paid you yet? I paid. Thank you very much. All he has done is to postpone it the day. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? A very good doctor can only lengthen your day. It does not cancel your debt. Hope you are hungry. That's all that doctors do. The reason we eat a goosey, the reason we take a wedu and amala, inyo, igbi, adiye, ha, ema bienya. Now, who would do Okay. To a lost effort, and then the adult here would When you a dog wake up, who would die? Click or ah, shut up, Narabone. That doesn't answer me, go. But we who know Jesus, 
I said, we who know Jesus. We who know Jesus. We who know Jesus. If you know Jesus, stand to your feet and say, I know Jesus. I'm not afraid of death. I believe in death. I know my Redeemer lives. it. Everybody shout hallelujah. We who know Jesus. We are looking forward with great excitement. The day that I know I will no more say call up Baze for me. Call. Call this doctor. Call. Uh, call. 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 Go to chemist. Bring me APC. Bring me Iodin. The day I will no more. Pim, 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 pim. You are pregnant now. Ordinary pregnancy. Three days you are not in the church. I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you that even that blessing. Look at the next verse. Are you a Christian? How many of you are Christians? Say I'm a Christian. Look at this verse. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkle of an hour, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we who shall, we who, we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put, must, must, must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Somebody say, Death is swallowed. Death. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is your power? Somebody shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. I said, Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Lawrence, death is swallowed in victory. Everybody raise your right and say, Death. You are swallowed in victory. No more defeat over me. If Jesus swallowed it, doctor, nobody can vomit it. What you all don't know that there are two kinds of death. How you die is not important. Where you are going is very important. Whether you die by fire burning your house, or I'm robber, take your head and blast it to 14 parts. And you are buried they have only helped you to get to where you are going but woe to him through whose hand you were killed because your blood will be asked from that person but you who know where you are going you don't care the bible says we shall be changed you shall be changed my mother died my brothers have seen some die my relation my grandfather my grandmother even though we are a church that doesn't know how to bury the dead because that's not our calling but none of us will escape death hebrew 9 27 everybody's on appointment read hebrew 9 27 hebrew 9 27 turn to it everybody be bold to read it with me one two go <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me. Is appointed to some. Is appointed to who? Did he say man? He did he say man? I beg your pardon. Men means what? Doctor, you, you, you have PhD. Men means what? All. And all means what? The entire creation. You mean? One day, you will not welcome Papa again. Oh Lord. And you who? You will go. Everybody. Eh? Eh? So, where are we going? Question Before you came, did you know you had nothing? Excuse me. When you were coming, how many cars did you bring? When you are going, how many will you take? No, no, no. You are making a mistake. You mean somebody like my friend, when he died, all those Rolls Royce will be left here? They will not take it with him? And I'm not carrying God's own palace with me? No, you have to put it in with me. 
No, no. They shut up. I said, you carry a motor. How can you say no? You mean I don't need it over there? Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> if that only that time you can sing my home in heaven, how beautiful my home in heaven, how beautiful my home on high. That's the only time everybody will become a landlord. Because Jesus said, in my father's house, I'm in mansion. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Yesterday I told some Christians in Lagos. I said, the day he was shot and killed. I asked God, I said, oh God, why? And God said, excuse me, is it your own? I said, no, he said, why are you asking me a question? What I sent him to come and do, he has finished it. And I call him home. He said, if I had asked the whole church to pray so he would die, the church would say, Father, we beg you not let him die. So I call him without the anointing. He said, when they finish asking me questions, I will ask them, why didn't you pray he should not die? If you think you can ask me why he died, why didn't you say he shouldn't die? You allowed me to let him die. Why did you allow me to let him die? Every month here, when we say, come for anointing, you say, eh, my Peking, I've been wanting to come. Now I'm my lady. Uh, <laughs> Papa, you know, I'm going to Ibadan, so put on here for my head first, so I can get there and come back. Uh, anoint you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, I will not come to tomorrow's service. So. Why? Because uh, I'm traveling. You forget that if God says you are not going the next one minute, that travel is cancelled. I am going to build a story building. I have a, I have ordered for Rolls Royce from London. It's coming next week. So don't, I'm not there yet to you hear me. I must ride it. The factory manufacturing it is closed. And you who is going to ride it, your page is closed. And one day this whole war will be silent. I said this whole world will be silenced. We who know Jesus, we are going to a better place. Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at that. Look at the next verse before you sit down. Oh death. Say that with me, everybody. Oh, where is thy sting? Oh grave. Oh, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is love. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through Lord our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Everybody shout hallelujah. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com the world database of christian preachers to help us reach 100 million people the message continues after this video about anointed you You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. 
simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Everybody say 11. Yes. Everybody say 11. Yes. As soon as we read this one, you are going to sit down. For those of you who think you are going to be here forever, you are not going to encounter any pain or difficulty, hold your Bible and fast in your seat bell. If you have a baby, congratulations. If you die, congratulations. If you go to hell, I'm sorry for you. If I know your father is going to make you save her, I say I'm sorry for you. Your father died, I'm sorry for you. Your mother died, I'm sorry for you. Because you are not born again. But if you are born again, congratulations. For to live is Christ. To die is gain. What do you tell people who make gain? What do you tell people who make gain? Stay there. Verse 21, everybody read with me. One, two, go. Read verse 21. All right, listen to what Paul is actually saying, different from your Bible. I speak as concerning reproach. Like some of the questions you people ask me, Daddy, did somebody really die? And Daddy, did they really did I hear? Why did God um, excuse me? Um, why, why has God uh, allowed it? Those are reproaches. They are reproach. You are challenging God. Elton said to me, son, he said, I've given instruction. If you are not in Nigeria, six hours after I die, and doctors say I'm dead, don't raise me from the dead. I've done everything God sent me to do. I've served God for 56 years as a preacher and I've known Christ for 69 years. So if I die, just six hours after I die, dig the ground, don't buy coffee. Use the best sheet I used last, just wrap me. The money you would have used for coffee, print tracks, put me in the ground because you are going to waste the money of the coffee. And exactly that's what we did. Six hours after he died, we dug the ground, wrapped him with bedsheet, put him inside. The money for his coffin, print tracks, made billboard. All those billboards you see on the way, Jesus is Lord in many highways. Prepare to meet your God. We are, we are bought the name of the signboard of Elton's coffin. So that more people will hear of him while he's dead than while he was alive. Somebody say hallelujah. He said, all this reproach, why do we who are Christian, why are we sometimes unbelievers are saved and Christians are killed? Why is it sometimes unbelievers can rent five houses and only one room we rent, landlord to our loads outside? They are all reproached. Why? Paul said, you are not the first. Look at what he said here from my own Bible. I speak as concerning reproach as though we had been weak. We are not weak. Happy. Wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Verse 23. Are they ministers of Christ? Listen to this. How many of you are ministers of Christ? How many of you know you are a Christian? I say, how many of you know you are a Christian? I say, yes, I. Yes, I. Paul is now asking, if you say you are a Christian, say, what of me? Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool and more in labors, more abundant. In stripes 
above measure, in prisons, more frequent, in debt, often. He say every time I, I faint, they pour water on me, I come back again. He, he says sometimes I die three times a day. He said often, often, often. Look at this. This is Paul. The Paul, uh, uh, Paul, whose coat they tore to pieces and the dead are raised. He's telling you in prison. If I go to jail now, many of you will backslide. If they come and arrest me now, see? Ah. I stole somebody's box. God forbid. I preach to the king and they arrest me. Many of you say, oh, Papa, oh, God, where are you there? God say, I don't hear, where were you? I don't hear, look at it. Look at what Paul said, he suffered for the gospel's sake. He said, in prison, in prisons, not prison, in prisons, more frequent, in death of, of the Jews, five times received by 45 stripes, save one, not 44. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Inside the hole. I'm speaking in tongue. In journeys often. In perils of water. In perils of armed robbers. In perils by my own countrymen. In perils by the hidden, in perils in the city, in perils in wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches, who is weak, and I am not weak. Also is offended, I burn not. If I must need glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmity. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, know that I lie not. Everyone say big hallelujah. Paul say I'm robbers will leave me every time. They take my coat, they take my Bible, they take my suitcase. He says often. You don't know there were hand robbers in the Bible. Look at the book of Luke. He said the man, the good Samaritan was coming. And a man was coming between Damascus and Jerusalem. And hand robber will let him. They tortured him, they beat him and took all his sin and dumped him at the side. Say, but the good Samaritan came. I said, what of Cain and Abel, same father, same mother. One killed the other. Death has been taking place from creation. May your own not be a disaster may your death be a glory to god may the day you die may sun shine and may moon be brightened may the glory of god be displayed and the name of jesus be glorified it's appointment for all wants to die luke chapter 10 verse 19 sit down luke 10 19 read it with me unison one two go Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Say loud, nothing shall by any means hurt me. In conclusion, I want to say this. The death that is dead in Christ the Bible said, precious in the sight of the Lord is the dead of the saints. Whereas it looks to you ugly and detaining and disgraceful. Why? I told them in Lagos, day before yesterday and yesterday, why not? The only person who wouldn't have died is God. And my God was crucified. Jesus did not swallow sleeping pill to die. They nailed him to the cross. Before they kill him, they naked him. They took everything from him. On the cross, they say it's not tall enough. Lift him higher. Let everybody pass and see him. They lifted him higher. And today, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess that he is Lord indeed.
But God told me to preach to you about death. Death is gain. And that subject we have never handled. And I'm glad. TV production crew, give me this tape. I'm sending it around the whole world. Death is not a disaster. Death is gain. And for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. On that day when Jesus rose, the day he was born, there was song on whole earth. Glory to God in the highest on that peace and goodwill to all men. For when he rose from the dead, the angel proclaimed, Why seek ye him, the living among the dead? He's not here, he's risen. And that's our hope. One day we shall all rise from corruptible seed to incorruptible, from fear to faith, from disaster and distresses to strength and power when our song shall be a new song how we overcome we will understand it better by and by stand to your feet glory be to God in the highest Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior and you don't know if death was to strike at you between now and your house now you can make heaven run out here quickly to surrender your life to Jesus rush out to my front here and say to me the host commit me to God I didn't understand before that death was gained but I want to give my life to Christ so if I were supposed to die now I will make heaven run out right now quickly Rush out quick, 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 quick. Come forward here and say to me, I want to make heaven. I don't want to die disastrous dead. All of you who say, I don't want to go to hell, but I want to make heaven. Come forward quickly. Don't discuss with anybody. If the Spirit is telling you, go forward, let them pray for you. So you don't die a disastrous death. You don't die a disgraceful death. Come forward here right now. Come forward. God bless you. God bless you. Begin to come from everywhere. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to surrender to Him. You want to be sure that if anything were to happen to you today, you are not going to hell, but you are going to heaven. Report here quickly. Present your life a living sacrifice. The Bible is talking of a living sacrifice. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Give them a hand as they come out. Give them a hand. They are coming to Jesus. You don't want hell fire. You want to make heaven. Come.
can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you. 
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was Idaosa's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbinidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to me. Church of God Mission, Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached, it was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then, sometime later, we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God on getting there. I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the 
uh, advanced team to go and paste posters all over Onicha. And we went to put posters all over Onicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform and, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin uh, my class. Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Ida Hosea university all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and i thank god it's particularly good for us whites british because in britain uh people are rather skeptical these days You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis we went to Baltimore flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90-seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are, and it's raining cats and dogs. What do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Dausa, who said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back off. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the sea. We have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. 
Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, if the house was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid, can we get a bus so we go to Bini? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Ibnidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one-on-one, -on -one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today, it also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me the Aztecs and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives.
Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. He say, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg what till I talk? Again? Again, again! Hey! Benson. You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Um, no. Why? But you say I can do it. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen. This baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate, and he said, "Oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it." I said, "How? How are you going to do it?" And he said, "Okay, go out if you don't want to see see me do it." But you know. As a stubborn child, then I stood at the I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child, be healed. After he prayed, he asked me, what is the name of the child? What's in the girl name? I said it's Inuarata. 
I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father comes, my late Ben Sinidahosa. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she swam in there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life? My father said, yes. He said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about nine o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> Another day died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> To him to the mother. He said, Please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, 
let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayer, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? He said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I didn't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. He said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. I have about eight children, two girls and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. He no mega jere, he no mega ta gi Jesu me gu wese, he no mega ta gu wese. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, 
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938. To a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. 
A letter took correspondence calls from Britain and United States while working in Bada Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, ben young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also President of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, President of Idaosa World Outreach, and President of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robot uh, University in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981, from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robot University in March 1984. He also received another degree, he also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife, Margaret Idaosa, were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was in Daosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He walked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa. According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager student from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, 
where he often appear on national religious telecasts. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates is a, a, a demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminars have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. It also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. 
Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your, your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ray Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.